Hello all, this is Dr. Alsup, and we have reached my favorite video for the Joints Basics session. And this is where we really get to discuss what a synovial joint is and those particular structures that make them unique and complex at the same time. So you can see here with the learning objectives that we have a lot to cover. We're going to start with the structures you will have in every single synovial joint and then talking through some of the structures that can be associated with the synovial joint but not found in every single one, such as menisci or labra or articular discs. Lastly, we'll have a discussion of what a bursa is um, and then something pathological that can occur if there's inflammation of the bursa, which is bursitis. All right, there will be four structures that all synovial joints have. The first is going to be a synovial or articular capsule, which is the way in which the bones actually connect. So you can see that the capsule kind of flanks the bone on either side, and it will flank the second component that all synovial joints have, which is the synovial or articular or joint cavity. And that's what this blue area is right here even into this region. Now I want to note that the space between the bones um, in this cartoonish image has been blown up to show you the basics and so you can just kind of conceptualize it but realize synovial cavities aren't that big. You actually have very little space in between the bones. You do certainly have space and that's important in terms of movement but it's not as large as what we're seeing on these cartoonish images. Within the synovial cavity, you will have synovial fluid, which is the third thing found in all synovial joints. Um, and lastly, there will be articular cartilage, which is number four. And we've mentioned articular cartilage in other videos. These are going to be the ends, on the ends of the, the articulating bones, but not what actually is connecting the bones. So let's talk about each one of the three structures in a bit more detail, starting with the synovial or articular capsule. We aren't going to spend time um, on the articular cavity because it's, it is just a space, although we will discuss certain structures that can be found within the cavity. The articular capsule or synovial capsule, like I said, you'll hear it either way. I've always uh, have a tendency to say articular. I, I, I like that word for some reason. So it, the articular capsule has three main functions. It will surround the synovial joint, which also allows it to enclose the synovial cavity as we mentioned in the subsequent slide. And this is the connective tissue that will actually unite or connect the articulating bone. So this is the part that is, this is the connective tissue that's connecting the bones. It is actually composed of two separate layers. The outer layer, which you can see here in this kind of light purple color, is the fibrous capsule, sometimes referred to as the fibrous membrane. And this layer is mostly composed of dense irregular connective tissue like we have here with a high amount of collagen fibers. And this will actually attach and intermingle with the periosteum that surrounds the bone, so you have that really tight connection. The fact that there is considerable collagen fibers that compose the dense irregular connective tissue really allows for the notable movements that can occur at synovial joints. In fact, an individual who is considered double jointed often just has greater flexibility in their articular capsule and or their ligaments. This outer layer is very often further fortified by capsular ligaments, or even sometimes completely replaced by tendons in certain areas, like the anterior knee. The inner layer of the synovial capsule, which is this kind of light blue right here, is referred to as the synovial membrane. And this is going to be composed of areolar connective tissue with elastic fibers. And in some joints, there may even be accumulations of adipose tissue at this layer. Um, the knee, as an example, will have a, an extensive fat pad uh, associated around the synovial membrane la la layer. And I keep bringing up the knee, which makes sense because it's one, it's one of our most complex joints. And we'll spend a lot of time talking about the specifics of the knee. And also, of 
very uh, notable importance, the synovial membrane will secrete synovial fluid. And synovial fluid is named um, after its similarity in appearance to an uncooked egg white, thus the of in its name. And this fluid will form a film over most of the surfaces within the articular capsule or uh, within the cavity. And this fluid serves many, many functions, including reducing friction that can occur, um, that will occur with movement at a joint, so it's really lubricating the joint. It will absorb shock, and we'll see that there are a lot of structures in synovial joints, particularly more complex ones that really play a role in terms of absorbing the shock that can happen, particularly uh, in the action of running, where you have all that weight of the body uh, with every step. This is a really uh, cool thing as well, is that synovial fluid also con uh, contains phagocytic cells, or cells that will remove debris um, that's sometimes found within the joint cavity due to normal wear and tear of a joint. So it can actually remove structures um, that you don't want in the synovial, or within the synovial joint. And this is a, another huge one. Recall that cartilage is mostly avascular, meaning that that articular cartilage that we, we talked about on the ends of the bone, it will be it will be avascular as well. So synovial fluid will provide oxygen and nutrients to the articular cartilage, which is typically something that oxygenated blood carried by arteries would do. But since articular cartilage doesn't have that, the synovial fluid is a nice substitute in terms of um, being able to supply some of that to the articular cartilage. Now, think about your last exercise. All right, hopefully you've done that, you know, not not too distant uh, past, but di when you exercise, did you warm up first? One of the benefits of warming up is to allow for the synovial fluid to become the right level of viscosity, as well as stimulate production and secretion. So it can be very beneficial in reducing the amount of stress to your joints during exercise. The articular cartilage is located on the ends of the articulating bone. So once again, let's kind of point it out on this image. I went a little too far with that arrow. It's really this right here. So it's located on the ends of the articulating bones and it's composed of a thin layer of hyaline cartilage. But as I have mentioned numerous times at this point, because it doesn't, and it doesn't hurt to say it one more time, articular cartilage is not what is binding the bones or connecting the bones. That is that articular capsule. So this is key here. Many of the functions of the articular cartilage are similar to what we had with the synovial fluid, and you need numerous structures and joints, uh, particularly synovial joints, which are freely movable, to reduce friction, to absorb shock, because all of this movement is occurring here. Now, again, articular cartilage is mostly avascular, and even though it can get some nourishment from synovial fluid, if there is an injury to this area, it is very slow to heal, and it may never, depending on how severe the, the injury or damage is. And it's here that it's with the articular cartilage that wear and tear of a joint most typically occurs. So osteoarthritis, which we will talk about in a bit more detail in a later video, will be directly related to the health of the articular cartilage. All right, let's spend some time on structures that won't be found in every synovial joint but maybe in some of the more complex joints, and we're gonna start with an articular disc, which is a complete fibrocartilaginous disc located in the middle of a synovial cavity. And it really serves to divide the cavity into two halves. And so this functionally can be important because it can allow different types of movements to occur at, at the different halves of the cavity. Uh, so we are looking at the temporomandibular joint here, and you can see the articular disc is this right here in the middle, and then you will have a space superior and inferior to it in this particular case. And so there'll be different types of movements that can happen in the upper synovial cavity or the lower synovial cavity because of the separation with the articular disc in the middle. Very similar to the articular disc are the incomplete, as in not a complete disc, so not completely circular, and you can really see that here uh, for the menisci. 
Um, this, these are the menisci or meniscus if you're only talking about one. And like the articular disc, it is composed of fibrocartilage. So fibrocartilage is uh, back again. And the menisci will typically be found in areas with increased stress and, fr and friction where that occurs. So think about the term meniscus. Have you heard it before? You have likely heard of a meniscal tear or injury, um, and this will occur at the knee joint. So the, the most typical menisci that you hear um, are the menisci of the knee joint. With both the articular discs and menisci during development, these structures are actually located between the fibrous and synovial membranes of the articular capsule. So this is during development, but as the joint becomes functional, particularly with walking and during more considerable friction that can occur with, um, uh, with walking or running, the synovial membrane is worn off in that particular section of the joint and you are left with the menisci. And these menisci will not be covered with synovial membrane. So that synovial membrane will stop on um, the other sides of the articular capsule and not make its way all the way to the menisci. Again, another structure similar in composition is the labrum, which are fibrocartilaginous so fibrocartilage is back, lip, located almost exclusively in ball and socket synovial joints. Okay, so this is a key here. So this is where we will find the labra. So what the labrum will do is sit in the socket portion and serve to really deepen the socket and allow for a better fit of the bone. So our two main ball and socket joints are going to be the shoulder joint, which we're looking at here. We're looking at the... Um, a, a view of the socket portion of the shoulder joint, uh, as well as the hip. The hip will also be a ball and socket joint and will have a labrum. A last structure I want to discuss are these little sac-like structures called bursi, or bursa if we're talking singular. And unlike the um, other accessory structures that we've just discussed, the menisci, the labra, and the articular disc that are located within the synovial capsule or in the cavity, bursi are not. They're located outside of the joint capsule and located in strategic locations um, in order to help alleviate friction in areas that experience quite a bit. So all complex synovial joints, like the shoulder joint that we can see here, the elbow, hip, the knee, which we can see here, these will all have bursi and typically multiple bursi. The bursa resemble a little, almost separate mini articular capsule with a little bit of fluid and can be found in many locations such as between skin and bone, tendon and bones, uh, ligaments and bone, and even muscles and bone. So pretty much anywhere where you have an increased amount of friction, um, you may have a bursa and these can develop over time as well. In certain areas, the bursi are very specialized in shape, almost tube-like, uh, to wrap around long tendons or tendons that travel for a while without muscle coverings or other structures. So these are uh, referred to as tendon or synovial sheaths. You have examples of these in the wrists with the long tendons from the forearm, which have to, have to travel all the way to your fingers, so very long indeed, and these will be covered by synovial or tendon sheaths. With repeated or excessive exercise, or say an infection enters the area of a bursa, the bursa can become inflamed and often will swell, and this is referred to as bursitis. And you can see an example of an individual um, that has some very prominent swelling uh, due to bursitis of their elbow joint. Other causes include trauma to the area. Uh, rheumatoid arthritis can cause bursitis. And symptoms will include pain mostly, is kind of the big one, swelling, which you can see here. And this is an important one as well. It can limit movement at that joint. Often in less severe cases, rest of the joint, so not moving the joint as much, will help in alleviating many of the symptoms. So we have discussed quite a bit, and I hope we are feeling a bit of comfort with the structures of a synovial joint. As I mentioned, as we talk about each individual uh, major synovial joint, we'll talk about these specific structures in detail um, as, it is, as it is associated with those joints. Let's review a question and um, 
This question I love. It's very similar to the type I would like to have on an assessment. So here we go. A patient complains of continued pain in their knee region. It is decided that arthroscopic surgery is needed to explore the area with a focus on inspecting the incomplete fibrocartilaginous structures associated with the knee. What structures will be the focus here? All right, so pause and take your time to answer this. Really work through that stem, find the pertinent things there. And when you are ready, unpause the video and we'll discuss together. So for me, the key to the stem is this right here, an incomplete fibrocartilaginous structure. And another key is that is associated with the knee. So articular cartilage is hyaline cartilage. So this is out. This is not correct. Articular discs are fibrocartilage, but they are complete. So, um, and we haven't gone into this detail yet, but there's not an articular disc in the knee. So this is out. Bursi are fib or not fibrocartilaginous structures, even though they are associated with the knee. So that's out as well. Labra are our fibrocartilaginous lips, but these are found on the sockets of synovial ball and socket joints. The knee is a hinge joint, so this is not the correct answer. So that leaves menisci as the only answer left, and it is in fact the correct one. Menisci are incomplete fibrocartilaginous discs. They sit, uh, these, uh, when we're talking about the knee, uh, they sit on the articular surfaces of the proximal tibia, which is part of the knee joint. All right, thank you for your time and attention, and please feel free to reach out with any questions.